Well, hello everyone. It's a real joy for Daryl, Mike and myself to welcome you to Greenfield here in Llanelli. We give thanks for this opportunity of worship as we gather on the Lord's Day. Let us hear the words of the psalmist. O Lord my God, I take my refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me. Grant me the peace of your presence. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens from the lips of children and infants. You have ordained praise. Let us pray. Father, a new day, a new Sunday. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you that we are able to come into your presence in the precious name of Jesus. For in him you have loved us and given yourself for us. And with all your church, Lord, in every place, in every continent and island, we join with the songs of praise and thanksgiving to him who has loved us and given himself for us. Amen. Our hymn, Lord, the light of your love is shining. reading this morning comes from the Old Testament, Hosea chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. God's love for Israel. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more I called Israel, the further they went from me. 
They sacrificed to the Baals and they burned incest to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms, but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love, I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt and will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? Swords will flash in their cities, will destroy the bars of their gates and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Even if they call to the Most High, he will by no means exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zebuim? My heart is changed within me. All my compassions is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I turn from and devastate Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in wrath, they will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. They will come trembling like birds from Egypt, like doves from Assyria. I will settle them in their homes, declares the Lord. May the Lord have his blessing on the reading of his word. Let us sing our next hymn, There is a Redeemer, God's own precious Son. Let us pray. Father, in a world that is so lacking in kindness and compassion, we thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ that gives us that impetus of your kindness, your grace and your love. We thank you, Lord, that in the midst of the darkness, the light of Christ shines brightly. And we do thank you for him, the word made flesh, who dwells among us. We thank you for the gift of your creation the psalmist has reminded us this day, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. 
and we offer our praise and thanksgiving this new day to you. The God of compassion, grace and love, who has given himself for us and who reigns in the heavens. We thank you and praise you as part of your church and as your people. We come into your presence, the holy, righteous God who has created the heavens and the earth, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose love and grace meet with us this new day. Father, we thank you that you are the God in which we take our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. And Lord, we thank you that we are able to turn to you and come into your presence, knowing that your forgiveness and grace meet with us. We have sinned against you, Lord. We confess our sins and we come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you that through him you have ordained that our sins, even though they are as scarlet, shall be as white as snow. We thank you for the immeasurable kindness of your grace that we behold in the cross of your Son. Bearing shame and scoffing rude in our place condemned, he stood. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to come in our weakness and in our need, knowing that you will not turn us away, for you will turn no one away who comes to you in the merits of Jesus. And so we come, Lord, confessing our sins and asking that you will enable us and strengthen us to live lives that give glory to you. Help us to take not the easy path of life, but the steep and rugged pathway that leads to you. For we know there are many temptations and, and many distractions in the world out there. But Lord, you are our refuge and strength. You are the God in whom we trust and the God who we hold on to. You will not leave us alone. Help us, Lord, to know that in loving and serving you, and is seeking to do your will. Lord, we thank you that you forgive us all our transgressions. Who is a pardoning God like thee, who has such grace so great and free? Father, as we gather here today, we thank you for the church in this place and every place, for the family of your people to which we belong. We thank you that you have called us into the covenant of grace through Christ. And Lord, we value that we are able to come into the family of your people, so, Lord, we pray your blessing upon us here in, in this place. And, Lord, every church that is represented today by those who are watching, may we be the people of God in this dark and evil world. May we show the light of Christ in our care, kindness and compassion. As we have been so loved, Lord, may we live, love others in your name and so fulfil the law of Christ. Be with your church that is cruelly persecuted, Lord our brothers and sisters in Christ, who are giving all on the altar of service, Lord. We, we, we commend them to you, we pray for them, that you will protect them and keep them. Lord, we, we know that the path before them is fraught with dangers and threats. O oh, Heavenly Father, keep your suffering church and may they know the blessedness of your presence and the reward that is theirs because they are standing in the midst of the evil that surrounds them displaying the love and the grace of Christ. Uphold your people, we pray. And for the church in this land of ours, Lord, the land of Wales that we love so well, forgive us our apathy and indifference to the things of God. Bring our children and young people to a knowledge of your redeeming love. Indeed, may your church be a shining light in the midst of the darkness and evil of the world that is surrounding us. May there be revival in our land once again, Lord, May the Holy Spirit move in power to bring many to a realization of their need of you, to follow in the ways of him who is the light of the world and will lead all from darkness to light. And Father, we do pray for our world. We pray for Gaza, Lord. We pray that the discussions that are going on at the moment will bear fruit. The immeasurable suffering of so many, Lord, is beyond our comprehension. And yet, Lord, we, we do pray that those of goodwill who seek a way through will find that which they desire, a peace and a reconciliation that comes from you. For Ukraine, Lord, in the events of the week that has gone by, the enormity of suffering there, Lord, is again that which causes pain to your heart. We pray for peace. And Lord, we, we do pray as well that you will be with us as a nation that we will turn again to the ways of God and that your people might be those who will show the way.
following the example of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the wonderful Counselor. May we learn from him. May we learn his ways. So bless us now, Lord, as we come around your word. May your presence be with us. For all of these things we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, we continue in singing the words of John Newton, Amazing Grace. In a world where there is such a lack of kindness and compassion, there are gems in the Old Testament that leads us in the ways of God. And here, especially in the prophecy of Isaiah, we read one of the most beautiful stories, I believe, we find in Scripture. And in the words that we heard Mike read earlier on, the prophet is one who speaks of that which is his own experience. Hosea was someone who uh, ministered in the 9th or 8th century BC, it was an age of apostasy, an age of open rebellion against God by his special people, those he had loved. The chosen people of God, those who sought to be his people, were those who often sinned greatly against that which God had ordained them to be. Now the prophets, of course, had a hard time. We read in the Old Testament about those prophets, such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, and others who said, Thus saith the Lord, but the people turned against the Lord, they went their own way. 
And we find that that is the situation here with Hosea. He was someone who was a very special prophet in a way. He had a heart, he had a compassion for his people, and he was someone who learned the ways of God in what for him must have been a very painful and hard experience. Can you imagine it? Uh, the story of Hosea is recorded for us, and we find that he was married to Gomer. But unfortunately, Gomer was unfaithful to him. It appears that she had at least two children were, that were not Hosea's. Eventually, she found herself on the streets, far away from, from Hosea's love and care. She was someone who eventually found herself in a slave market. And that was something that for Hosea must have been the most painful of experience. His wife, whom he loved, whom he cherished, had turned against him. She followed the ways of evil and prostitution and was such that she was ostracized completely from her husband and from her family. But what do we find here? God says to Hosea, Hosea, go and find Gomer. Can you imagine his reaction? Go and find her, bring her back into your home and, and love her and restore her. And although we do not the, know the end of the story, as far as Gomer is concerned, we do know that Hosea fulfilled the instructions of God. Gomer was restored. He sought to love her again, forgive her her transgressions, to redeem her to himself. And God said, Hosea, that's the way that I love my chosen people. They may turn against me. They may prostitute themselves by bowing to other gods. They may wander far from me. But I will restore them and I will love them as you have restored Gomer unto yourself. It's an amazing story of, of, of Hosea's. First of all, his, his obedience to God. He could easily have rebelled and said, no, that woman had no place in my life now. Look what she's become. She's a shame to me. But he restored her. He was faithful to the call of God. And that's what we find here. We live in a world that is lacking in kindness and compassion. And as we look around a world that is so divided and where there is so much evil, indifference sometimes to the suffering of so many, we read by virtue of the word of God that this causes pain in the very heart of God. God, in his mercy, has created us and restored us unto himself. And you know, the reality is that God seeks to restore all unto himself. But yet a world that does not acknowledge him, a society like ours who once filled these chapels to capacity, the people of God pass by. We often sing a hymn that all the pain and all the suffering rings with pain the heart of God. And can you imagine a God like that? A God who suffers pain and he yearns to bring back to himself those who have gone astray. And that's what we find, of course, in the story of Hosea, an illustration for us of the way that God's kindness and grace meets with us in our need. You may feel perhaps you've wandered so far from God that he could never forgive you for your sins. Don't believe that for a moment. Do you know why? Because he says, I will turn no one away who comes to me. The prophets often spoke of the compassion of God and Isaiah, another prophet, spoke of the way in which God would, in the fullness of time, bring the fulfillment of his promise to a reality because he speaks of a suffering servant who would come to die for the sins of the world and to, and to bring the all of creation back unto himself. Isaiah describes him as mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. It's wonderful to know that this morning. We look out in a world that is divided by wars and rumors of wars. The events that have happened recently in our own land reminds us that evil can manifest itself in such a tragic way. If we suffer, if we feel for those who do suffer, the loss of their children, the enormous sufferings that, that follow, how much more does God? And that's why we know that through the scriptures that God is like that. After all, Jesus said that Jesus, God is our father. Jesus didn't teach us to say our creator who art in heaven, our sustainer who art in heaven, even though God is all those things, our father. And remember the story of the prodigal looking to a distant land. What is there? Father's heart yearning for the, for the son. He, 
He loved who had sinned so greatly against him. Every time we come together to worship, we say the words of the Lord's Prayer. We do not do it out of habit or ritual, but to remind ourselves of a Father who art in heaven. Friends, be sure of that today. The imagery of Hosea displays to us the very nature and character of God. He is holy, he is righteous, his presence fills the universe. But more than anything, he's a yearning father who seeks to bring you and me and all of this creation back unto himself. All the pain and all the sorrow rings with pain, the heart of God, as the hymn says. Here in Hosea, God cries out, my heart is troubled within me. God in pain, God longing to restore all things unto himself. If that is the heart of God, well, what about the perplexity of God? We read in Genesis chapter 6, as God pondered that which he had created, the question, did God regret creating mankind? The perplexity of God is such that his actions re re resound with the way through. When you and I have a dilemma in our lives, we have to sit down and we have to think about things. If we have big decisions to make in our lives, we cannot go into those things hastily. Whatever those decisions are, important life-changing decisions possibly about our careers, about our finances, about relationships sometimes when we have to contemplate the future. There are sort of a sense of perplexity. What, what am I going to do? Well, how am I going to get through this? And, and that's a question, I think, that, that's pretty fair. And, and I'm sure it would apply to us all at one time or another in our lives. The reality is the perplexity of God. Is that a right word to describe the God of creation? Could God be perplexed? I'm sure Hosea was. Oh, look at his situation. Gomer, he must have been hurt to his core. The woman he loved and cherished would sell herself on the streets of the city and the temple of the pagan gods. Like the prodigal again, eating the food of pigs. You know, what can I do about it? Hosea must have asked himself. He must have been exasperated. He, he must have been. And yet the word came from the Lord. You know, and, and, and God says, when Israel was a child, I loved him. I taught Israel to walk, I healed them. I led them with cords of kindness. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. But the more I called to Israel, the further they went from me. My people are determined to turn from me. That, that's the perplexity of God. And then he says, how can I give you up? How can I let you go? Threats of judgment abound possibly, yet God seems more intent on the contrary to that. And the reality is that God worked out his intentions. He worked out his intentions in the fullness of time he sent his son into the world. The only way to redeem a lost and sinful world. A way that was ordained in the heart and in the counsel of God to bring you and me back into a relationship of grace. All have fallen short of the glory of God. We know that, and Gomer especially. But Hosea was a man who hearkened to the word of God, and he was the agent of, of God's redeeming love here. Here we see glimpses of what would come in the New Testament. Here we see the obedience of Hosea. Here we see, if you like, that which would be fulfilled in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done, that led him to the cross. God's way of redeeming that which was lost and bringing you and me back into a relationship of grace. Friends, we thank God today that as we come, we are able to come with that confidence and hope. We're able to come as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to know that once we were far away, now we have been brought near because God's nature and character is unchanging and his compassion reaches to you and to me. That's why this gospel must be proclaimed. It is God's means of redeeming the lost and bringing you and me back into a relationship of grace. And we need it, do we not? I don't know about you, but every time I put the news on these days, it's not good news. 
the perplexities that we see in the world out there, in Gaza, in Ukraine, in, in other places, the recent riots on the streets of our cities, the enormity of the evil that compounded that situation. How can we face, how, how, how can we? How can we be reconciled? We can't. Are there in the light of a God who is love and who will work out his purposes and who loves us despite our sin and rebelliousness, who weeps with those who weeps, but ordained a way, not passive in his response, but dynamic in his grace, amazing grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Don't you see? Don't you see the heart of God here? Don't you see the way of God here? Don't you see the way of the cross here and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead? God's way, worked out in eternity before the stars were formed to redeem a lost and sinful world. And that's what we see in this lovely story and that's which we find in the cross of Christ. And the victory that is ours in Christ is something that is assured now because you cannot compare anything in the world out there that will bring you the joy and peace that, the, 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 that being a disciple of Jesus is when we trust and believe in his atoning death and resurrection from the dead. Dear friends, we are sure of that today. That's why this gospel is preached to the furthest corners of the earth and the kingdom is coming. Why? Well, finally, it's the passion and the, and the, and the purpose of God. I cannot give you up. You know, another prophet, the prophet Jeremiah, who echoes the ways of, of Hosea. Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope and a future. And God had promised that Israel would be his treasured possession. And that's a promise that's repeated to the church that God would not abandon us. God is not willing that anyone should die but for all should come to repentance, Peter wrote. And because of that, we can know that purpose will be fulfilled. There's purpose here. There's purpose in that which God had ordained for Hosea. It's purpose for this lovely prophet to be in the canon of scripture. It, it, it resounds with the intentions and the passion of God. And we see that fully revealed to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter, we read, God is not willing that anyone should die but for all to come to repentance, all to come to repentance. I, I often wonder what Gomer's reaction would have been when Hosea would have walked into the pagan temple and lifted her up and taken her home. We don't know the full story. We don't because scripture doesn't tell us that, but she was restored. And it really reveals to us the immeasurable grace of God really for God sent his son into the world to redeem the lost and to give us that wonderful hope. The Lord is merciful and gracious, full of compassion. So to come back to what I said at the beginning about kindness, there's a lack of that in the world. There is darkness and evil. But God has given us light and hope. And that is in the cross and resurrection of his son from the dead. All that we read of Hosea is a prelude for the gospel message. And it resounds with that truth today that, that we hold on to, because this is the God we love and we serve. This is a God who will not allow evil to have the final word. And this is a God who has given his only begotten son, who fulfilled everything that Hosea displayed in his life, but who died upon the cross for the sins of the world, that you and I might be redeemed to him forever. Such passion, such providence, such grace meets with you and I. So question is, what are we going to do about it? Well, I can tell you, I hope that the challenge of this word will enable us to think again and to remember that in a world lacking in kindness and compassion, where so much evil abounds, this way is the way that leads to life. You may have all the possessions in the world. You may think you have your life together in every way that you would wish. Perhaps today you've been through bereavement or sadness, or perhaps you've become disillusioned with the message of the church. Friends, this message gives us that assurance that we are loved and we can come home to that love because Christ has come. He has died and he has risen from the dead and he is Lord. 
And the word is ordained that by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone, there is life for a look at the crucified one. There is life at this moment for thee. Goma was wonderfully redeemed. Hosea was God's agents of grace. We are God's agents of grace as the church, proclaiming this good news to all who would come. Psalm 8, which we read earlier, brings it all together. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. No enemies, no retribution. Love from the heart of the Father above. Amen. Our final hymn, dear friends, is I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for the message of Hosea and pray that it might speak to our hearts today. The word of God reminds us that God is not willing that anyone should die, 
but for all to come to repentance. May we come to you, Lord, perhaps in our perplexity, in our concerns and anxieties, to know that you care for us and your kindness meets with us. And Lord, may your blessing now be upon us and those we love. And the blessing now of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and those we love now and always. Amen.